and we're gonna stay there hopefully fingers crossed hi guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to a brand new video as you may be able to tell outside my window i am just parked up outside of home bargains i'm actually en route in to get my hair done and there's this big home bargains near where i get my hair done so i always pop in first it's a bit of a drive for me to get to the hairdressers and i, th I thought i'd pick up the camera here i was just going to do a home bargains haul but i thought I vow to be more honest with you guys, more open with you guys, rather than just be haul, 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 just be a bit more real. And I touched upon my anxiety and stuff like that. Um, was it in my New Year's Day vlog? Or a video on New Year's Day, anyway. And you might be able to tell my voice, I'm feeling a bit anxious, and I always get like this before the hairdresser's appointment. I feel like, for me, if I feel trapped in a situation that like springs up these anxiety feelings and I, I don't know why I'm telling you this I don't know I don't know I just feel like maybe even if there's one person out there that can somehow relate to me even if it's not through anxiety but it's through some kind of other mental health struggle whether it be an eating disorder an addiction a feeling of low like really like low feelings low self-esteem even if i'm just relating to one person out there then hopefully i don't even know if i'm going to upload this clip who knows if i do then yeah then hopefully i've helped one of you in some sense knowing that you're not alone i have actually bought this a few people since talking about like my anxiety and starting therapy few people recommended this book so i thought i'd bring it with me today because i know that for me hairdressers equals anxiety and more often than not when i'm there i start to settle a bit then i maybe get a bit in my head a bit worked up thinking oh god i've still got like i'm, I'm in the hairdressers for five hours thinking i'm still you know like i've only just got here and then by the time my hair's being washed and everything, all those anx anxious feelings usually have gone by that point. So, but when I'm in this state right now, as in a pre going to the hairdressers, I just, this build up of an overwhelming sense of, I don't want to be here, just rules your, it overtakes your whole thinking, which obviously I'm working on and even vocalizing it kind of sounds a bit extreme it sounds silly it doesn't sound i don't know it just doesn't sound like it makes sense people you know who don't have never had anxiety or anything like that might think oh just get a grip just pull yourself together but it's like physical symptoms that i can't that then spiral into it's all thoughts and feelings that are causing these physical symptoms when i say physical symptoms i'm talking a bit of like very restless i'm very restless i can't like just <sighs> i get a bit shaky my heart flutters i get a bit of an upset tummy i feel like a bit nauseous i feel a bit dizzy all of these feelings are just stemming from thoughts in my head if i had a day working from home today then this moment right here right now today if i was working from home today i wouldn't be feeling like this it stemmed through yeah triggering things like something as simple as going to the hairdressers and i love my hairdresser we have a good chat i sometimes take work with me keep myself busy but i still this build up and this feeling before i get there and even when i first get there i just can't shake and i'm i'm really trying i'm trying so it's a journey it's a process if you want me to like kind of keep you posted on my whole therapy journey my anxiety journey then let me know whether you can relate to it or not if you don't want me to talk about it if you want me to just get in the shop and just crack on then fine because i don't want to bring anyone down in these videos i that's got i guess kind of why i've never really talked about it before i just want to be uplifting it's a positive space ultimately that's what i love to come to youtube for having said that i first discovered the whole youtube world after zoella talked about her anxiety 10 years ago or whatever in one of her videos when zoe sug mentioned it and i was like that is me that is how i feel i could relate to her 
through her struggles then maybe I don't know maybe you would want me to be a bit more open and honest and chat about this kind of thing let me know if you do but I've only got uh, about like half an hour or so so I'm gonna head on into the shop anything that I do spot I'll vlog anything that I pick up I'll show you guys later I have no breakfast because again that's another thing I completely lose my appetite I have bought a sandwich like I say because I'm there for a few hours so that if I get packaged later I've got my lunch with me. Let's head on in, let's get distracted and let's go to the hairdressers, let's get it done and I'll update you guys again. feeling fresh feeling so much better literally instantly like that <sighs> get in my head I get in my head anyway I just had a well I actually had a full head today which um again is like the appointment that takes longest although it's not too much longer than getting half head anyway so yes that is what I've done we end up just kind of like blowing it straight to check the layers thin it out and um yeah, I just style it up when I get home. I'm not doing anything special, so it's, I never ask for like a bouncy blow or anything like that. Um, but yeah, feeling so much better, feeling refreshed. <laughs> and um, I did pick up some bits from Home Bargain, so I'll show you those when it's actually starting to get, no, it's not starting to get dark. It's, it was overcast with rain whilst I was in there, so that was what threw me off. But by the time I get home, half three, four, builders have a couple of questions. I feel like maybe, if it's not too busy at home, I'll show you some home updates and then I might pick up the camera maybe tomorrow just to show you the bits that I got from Home Bargains. Obviously, it doesn't affect you guys anyway. I'm just talking through my schedule in my head. I did read a chapter of my dare book whilst I was in there. In fact, let me read you this sentence, this first part. Where is it? it just made me laugh. So the whole like concept of this is not to manage your anxiety, to actually fight it and overcome it. Um, which a lot of coping mechanisms help you get by with it. This is what I talk to my therapist about. I don't want to just get by, which is what I've done to this point. I want to, I want it to be gone. I want to manage it, but also be content that I've beat it. Because yes, I'll still get anxious at some point, just like normal people that don't suffer with anxiety get at points in their lives, big changes and things like that but I don't want it to affect the smaller things um, or like be over-consuming. Uh, oh, where is it? I'm gonna have to find it. I mean, really, what the heck is wrong with me? Why can't I just get up in the morning, not obsess about this anxiety and the day ahead? I used to be so carefree and now I worry about having to sit still while getting my hair cut. <laughs> I was like, oh dear. And then there was a like story of a guy that, um, like regardless of what profession you're in or what you do in other aspects of your life you can still suffer with it for instance like this guy now who suffered with anxiety himself now um helps people to overcome it and he said he's helped people you know in, in super pressurized industries like um police officers firefighters olympic athletes that's a big one as well with their struggle of like self-esteem if they come second in a race when first is all they're ever after and whatever it may be but um that this officer in particular that he worked with this like high-end officer who was in charge of 300 employees was sat in a barber's chair having a panic attack and therefore after that dreaded the thought of going to a barber's and being having to be sat makes him feel trapped and I mean it's not just a case of going to the hairdressers or it's just anything I mean if you get it you get it I'll just leave it at that anyway because I don't want to go on about it too much if you can't relate to me but anyway um I'm gonna get on the road I will yeah hopefully show you some home updates when I get back rather than doing like huge renovation vlog updates like I have done in the past I feel like what I might do moving forward is just keep you guys posted within my vlogs um so rather than every video be titled renovation update it might be home bargain tool but I might also show you some snippets of what renovations we've been getting up to what progress we've made and yeah let's get on the road I've got my appetite back now so I'm gonna eat my sandwich get on the road see you guys when I get home and yeah 
That's it really. Home sweet home. The place is an absolute tip. Sorry, I'm just switching my socks and stepping in a puddle. I almost foot got wet. I've also got this big box um, of stuff that I've sorted through that needs donating. So I'm gonna take that to a uh, take that to well, I say charity shop. Our tip has like a brick a back brick a brack donation section let me put you a bit higher up there and yeah so i'm gonna just drop that off there it's actually near barney's doggy daycare so i could time it whereby i go and pick him up and do that at the same time so um i got home to two parcels i thought i'd just quickly share them with you first one i'm very excited to receive because if you have yet to see which I'm sure you already have, but my friend Lydia has done her own collection with Naked Fashion. I picked up a piece from the collection myself. So I bought this, I actually bought this in two sizes, my other one's coming, and this one that I've got here is the Euro 38, which is like a UK 12. I picked up a 10 initially and I thought, well, that might not fit, and then ordered a second one. <laughs> the shipping was free, so I just did it um i'll just return one of them because i love it i already know in support of lydia i'm keeping one of them just a case of which size i think will fit me best i think she wears um a 36 and i'm i'm a bit bigger than lydia um so i thought i would go that's why i ordered the 36 i thought well she wears the 36 i'm going to get the 38 um oh it's just so gorgeous though look at this fabric I've been after a really decent, throughout all of autumn and winter really, a really decent blazer from this kind of like country style pattern print. It's like a, a chevron, uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous print. I mean, I'm no fashionista, so Lydia probably will describe this way better than I do. But yeah, I love the little buttons on the edge. And I really liked the detail on the back of this blazer as well. It makes it more of like a kind of outwear jacket with that kind of trench flap style extra panel. Um, yeah, a little slit at the bottom. Really like it. Let me just take off this um, sweatshirt so that I can try it on and show you guys. But I did buy one from Matalan. Was it Matalan? Yeah, Matalan. I ended up returning because it had like a red thread through it that I just wasn't loving. So I decided to return it. So I was, yeah, without a nice kind of country style blazer. Okay, I actually think now having tried this on that a 12 or like 38, sorry, would be good for if I was to layer up a hoodie underneath, but maybe not just a t-shirt. Unless if I do this whole scrunched, you know, like for the, if you get an elastic band, you just put it round and kind of scrunch it up like that so that the sleeves are up. Maybe that would work actually. Otherwise, yeah, stay true to size, I'd say with this one, but I love it. So let's say, uh, well done, Lydia, for creating such a gorgeous collection. She's got some really nice burgundy pieces i mean by the time you're watching this probably all sold out but this is going straight in my wardrobe i also got home to a parcel from pixie love a pixie purchase pixie parcel they are so generous with their pr parcels and i love i, I use every single day without fail their glow tonic so i'm um, always willing to try out new pixie products clarity collection so they've sent the full lot the cleanser the tonic it's got salicylic acid and probiotics um and then there's also the concentrate the day oil free moisturizer and zero zits spot solution i used to love using a spot solution my skin was quite problematic when i was younger i mean by no means anything i can really complain about compared to some people that severe with that suffer with severe acne but i definitely i mean you can tell now at the end of the day i get like an oily t-zone so because of that i can break out but my skin into adulthood i would say has not been too bad i've got a couple of depot parcels that i want to package up if i'm heading back out to um put that at the tip i'm gonna do that and then yeah probably end up filming either when i get back if it's not too dark or tomorrow morning 
all the bits that I got from Home Bargain. Oh guys, what a morning. <laughs> Let's start with some good vibes, good life. It is a brand new day as you can tell. I'm a bit blown out, but I need to do my makeup. Uh, okay, what day are we on? People come with blessings and lessons. Everyone you connect with reflects a part of your inner being, perhaps one that you've yet to meet. And most importantly, everyone you encounter is teaching you how to love yourself. So there you go if you needed to hear that. These are on sale as well at the moment, so I'll leave it linked. Because uh, obviously it's like a daily calendar, daily diary type thing. Hence why it's probably reduced. So, I'm just going to put on some makeup, just a light bit of makeup today. I'm not really, well actually I am doing something. I'm going out for dinner tonight with Tom's family. Um, we're going to Manchester. But that's not until later, so I might top up my makeup later anyway. But um, as for today... I'm just going to, uh, I've got some work to do and then obviously I was going to show you some bits that I got from Her Bargains and also I've been to Poundland as well recently and uh, yeah so I thought I would show you those few bits but yeah my goodness this morning guys for the first time ever I'm going to say ever I genuinely thought I could have lost Bar Barney like it was so scary and I know that sounds dramatic and he's absolutely fine but oh my heart you know that feeling of like intense adrenaline fear panic and I'm not talking anxiety and panic attacks I'm talking like you could potentially like something trauma like out of nowhere out of the blue something happens so we're on a walk this morning just the usual um there's a few retrievers that tend to go the area that we go. So they're all having a good retriever wrestle. If you've got a retriever, you know what I mean when I say that. They just, they go for it. And there's um, there's one that we've met not too long ago. Actually, we've only sort of, Barney's only played with him a few times. And he is the softest, cutest, gentle giant ever. He is adorable. But they were in a retriever wrestle and... Um, you know, sometimes if you've got a dog, you'll know that sometimes when they wrestle, when they're play fighting, they go for each other's collars. And the other dog had Barney's collar in his mouth and it got stuck behind his like sharp teeth at the bottom and it twisted to the point where it was choking Barney. And so obviously me and the other owner, I, I sort of, I first looked at them and they weren't really wrestling, but they were like connected and I was like, that's strange. Like, what are they doing? Has he got his collar and Barney's just kind of playing frozen solid, I'm not going to move, or what? And then it stayed like that. And then I twigged and realised, oh, he's got his mouth caught in Barney's collar. Let me go to get it off. And when I got close enough to realise it was that tight around Barney's mouth and I could hear Barney go, eh, eh, like a choking sound, I say, oh my God, he's going to choke him. He's going to choke him. And I was like panicking and fretting and trying to like, it was a quick release collar as well where it's just like a little button that you click open and I still couldn't get it and then the and there was another retriever that they were playing with and um that retriever's mum managed to we were all three of us trying to get this collar off of Barney so that he would stop choking and it must have gone on for like a minute two minutes at which point obviously when someone someone when a dog is choking or someone is choking the longer time goes, the more panicked you get. And then um, the other dog started crying in pain as we were trying to release his jaw and his teeth from this collar. So he started panicking and pulling away. And as he's pulling away, Barney's going with him, choking. And my God, <laughs> he's okay. That's the important thing. But you know when like, oh, <sighs> I was so scared, but he's fine. He's fine, so I just need to let it go. Oh, but it's just so scary. So scary. The scariest thing that has ever happened to me, having Barney. 
because all three of us were like, he's choking. <laughs> oh God, why am I crying doing my makeup? Anyway, he's all good. He is fine. I'm just giving him a, a bath because my goodness, this field that we take him to, the weather, if it's frosty, then it's fine because the ground is hard and like he comes back clean. But when it's like so muddy and like rolling around in mud, and obviously I got caked in mud because it's quite thick mud. I'm usually out in like wellies or dewberries. Obviously during that incident, I was on hands and knees like trying. So my legs were absolutely caked in mud and water when I got back. Um, but yeah, my goodness, that was scary. <sighs> puts things into perspective though, that's for sure. I'm gonna carry on doing my makeup. I'm just going to, like I said, do a light coverage today. I'm not really doing anything. And even the dinner that we're going to tonight, if you're local to Manchester, I was gonna say it's quite casual. If you're local to Manchester and you want a good Chinese, like a local Chinese place, it's called, it's called Glamorous. <laughs> Which I don't know is the best name for a restaurant, but it's, a it's above, uh, if you know Wing Yip, if you're from Manchester, it's kind of like, kind of outskirts of Manchester. It's not, it is city centre. It's like on near like Northern Quarter and Coates area, I think. Um, but because it's just that bit out of the city, it's, um, it's good because it's got like a multi-story car park that's free and you just drive straight up to the restaurant. It's very casual. So I probably won't even get changed to be honest with you. Maybe just put on a different jumper. But other than that, quick top up of the makeup, and then good to go. Very, very casual, which I like. You have to get the pork belly that they do fresh and the, what else do we get? The duck on the bone. Is that right? Yeah, duck on the bone, I think it is. And the fatty juiciness, saltiness of the pork belly and the duck is just divine. If you want to know any of the products that I use, I pretty much use the same things every single day. I've got a beauty routine. If you search Fairy Phantom Beauty Routine, it'll come up where it's basically everything that I do, like with my hair care routine, my makeup, my everyday makeup, and like my gel nails as well, which that was one other thing that I completely broke a nail when I was on the floor wrestling with his collar, but never mind hanging on for now so fingers crossed it'll it'll um, last for tonight although this is new addition to my makeup bag since that video and it's from zara it's this blush which i mentioned in like a zara vlog or zara vlog zara video once I, there's no shade written on it but it's just this gorgeous orangey peachy shade but it does kind of come off a little bit pinky as well well not pinky but like blush like it's not like whoa that's orange um, but yeah, I've been really enjoying that new addition to my makeup bag. Okay, quick house updates whilst there are no builders here currently. So first huge update is the front door. Now I am looking at getting a front door currently. And if you remember previously, we had a secondary door here, which has been ripped out. And our plan is to actually, a couple of the houses on our street have it, and I really like it, whereby this external front door is actually removed. So we've got an external porch. So if you imagine when it's raining, you can kind of come in, shelter from the rain and sort finding your keys out before coming in here, this is where the new front door will be, into the house. So we're gonna retile all of this with some nice like black and white Victorian tiles, sort out all of this external brickwork and pop on some ceiling. I don't know whether we're gonna render this part or just paint the brickwork white, I'm not sure yet. Obviously remove this door, so it's really hard to see because of the light. So now if I stand in the porch, you'll be able to see that this is where the new front door will be. And as you can tell, the metal lining has been going on the um, walls in this corridor and it just gets insulated and then plasterboarded over, which is what has been done through there. So in this first room here, which will be like kind of cozy living room area, we're gonna have a nice fireplace there and TV and the windows are getting replaced I think next week. Um, so all of these original, well, in fact, no, those aren't original. Those two are original windows, but everything's getting replaced. Had we have had all sash windows throughout this house, we would have looked to maybe restore them, get them double glazed, but it was only just a couple of windows left. The rest of them had been replaced with these ones, which again, single glazed windows, they're just not efficient and they're all skew whiff as well. Nothing was level. So they're 
being removed and replaced with the same windows that we've had throughout the upstairs put in. But we're just trying to figure out whether or not we want to put some crittle style doors in here to kind of separate from the living room to what potentially could be a dining room or snug, whatever it's gonna be. Um, the intention with this room is to prob probably have like a wall to wall, ceiling to floor kind of bookshelf style thing maybe even with I love like you know how you can get like a brass rail along the top with like a hooked over ladder that slides along I love that look so maybe that there in this corner we're gonna have to have a little cupboard for the manifold for the underfloor heating which is gonna go here so that can be boxed in maybe some shelves above there otherwise this wall I'm not sure maybe panel it or maybe have some kind of a console here maybe have a dining table here if we don't have one in the kitchen space so we're just keeping plans fairly open with this one for now. And then that is going to be like a little cupboard and then a downstairs loo. But we're just finalizing plans with that as we are with this kind of external way here. Basically, we're waiting on... We've got planning permission to have a carport out there, but we're trying to argue for a full enclosed garage, which if we do get that, then we would love a door from inside the garage to come up into the house, just because obviously if you imagine driving your car into the garage and it's tipping it down outside, you can then just, um, you're fully dry and you just bring your bags in through the house. So that's why we're just holding off a couple more days for that. But otherwise, it's fairly straightforward for the builders to just brick this up from the outside and then reline it and board it once we've got that answer. Oh, we've had the staircase boarded as well. Again, what will be a downstairs loo in here. This is the door down into the basement. And then this is how the extension is looking like. So we have had everything boarded. Obviously the doors are in. All the pink boards are the fire boards. The purple are regular ones, I think. Um, and TV we're gonna have there. We're gonna have kind of a media wall here with TV and sound bar. And then either side of the chimney breast, we're gonna have like a built-in cupboard with shelves um, for storage and also for decorative purposes. And then this is where I'm thinking we may be able to fit like a nice dining table along here, so therefore not need a dining table in the other room. And then over this side, we will have like L-shaped units for the kitchen, the island. They are all getting delivered, I believe, tomorrow, or at least within the week, but I think the kitchen's being delivered tomorrow. So they need to crack on and plaster, which as you can tell, the pantry has been plastered and I feel like once a room is plastered then it starts coming together pretty sharpish. So yeah, very exciting on all of the house updates and that is where we are at. We have also had some samples arrive from, um, oh that's the, let me put you down. This is the colour that we're going to go for for the bespoke painted island. You're not going to be able to tell very well, but this one is the colour we've gone for, invisible green. And we've got some worktop samples Oops, from Gemini Worktops. We're pretty decided. Well, this one was our original choice, which is the Calcutta Gold Superior. And it's a lot more warm toned, which is why I thought, yes, that'll be better. We're going for like brass hardware. This is the units that we've got from DIY Kitchens. Um, I thought this would go better with the fact that we're having like antique brass hardware and everything. Whereas this one, it has got a gray vein running through it, which is what put me off initially. However, having seen a girl on Instagram who's got a um, kitchen which has a dark green kind of color to it, they used brass hardware and like taps and everything like that. They went for this worktop and it looks beautiful. So having seen that it works with brass and green, I feel like we may be swaying towards this one. Right, this is what my hair is looking like. Once I've used my uh, curlers, I'll leave my exact curlers linked below because I know there's a couple very similar, uh, but the ones that I use to get like a quite a thick, nice big wave. And then I just kind of brush it out with a bit of oil, pop a bit of hairspray in, and that's how it's looking. My nail's not lasted. <laughs> I know it wouldn't, I'm gonna have to redo that gel, gel nail later. Hot still, very, very hot. I just made myself a peppermint tea. I had these apple and cinnamon ones that I got, no, it was called spiced apple. 
it's basically apple and cinnamon left over from Christmas from M&S and I'm actually really sad that they've run out. Right, so on this particular occasion, I noticed so many branded things, especially like in the beauty section, which were like majorly discounted. So I actually took a few clips of some of my favorites and popped them over on my, um, my Instagram Homer account, which is Freya Farrington Home, and my TikTok as well, if you just search Freya Farrington. So if you wanna see loads of amazing designer, not designer, but like branded things, like branded products, I did pick up a few, but if you wanna see any others, then be sure to check out that video. I also, I know I mentioned I pick up, picked up some um, Poundland bits, which I really wanted to show you, but I need to head back out tomorrow to pick up some parcel bags for some Depop bits that I've been selling. And I always tend to go to Poundland to get those. So I'm gonna head back out tomorrow and get some more bits, or like get those, and if I get any more bits, um, I'll include them in a separate video. So my next video will probably be a Poundland haul trip, which I've not done in a very, very long time because I've been disappointed with Poundland. However, some of the bits that I have picked up recently, maybe things are changing, really impressed. So yeah, stay tuned for that for next video. But as for now, Oh, where do I begin? First thing I will show you is this beautiful vase. It's not new to Home Bargains. I have seen it in there before. However, I've only really seen it with the pink coloring. When I saw that this one had the gray, I thought, yeah, I'm gonna get that because it's a really nice, like, warm gray. I loved the kind of grooved edges and the thinner neck for, like, popping some, like, flowers in, some foliage. So, yeah, I thought I would pick that up at $5.99. And then the base is, like, a stone. It's really, really nice. This is something I'd seen on um, online on Instagram, and I thought I need to try and find that, and I did. Again, one of those kind of branded items. It's from The Ordinary. It's a 100% niacinamide powder, which you can mix together with another product to apply. I think these retail for, what did it say on the label, like a tenner or something? It was 99p. I found this brand. This is called Wonder Kiss. They do these lip products. The lip scrub was only 99p and it retails for about 18 pounds. Then this one, which retails for, I think it said about 26 pounds, was only 199, this like plumping lip gloss. So I'm excited to give those a, a try. <clears throat> I already have one of these got to be glued brow product things to um, kind of like run through your brows and it's really really good so I've picked up a spare when I saw that they had them cheaper than the retail retail price in home bargains they were selling for 3 dollars I've obviously just had my hair done and had a toner put on it but I love using purple shampoo and I got the Provoke Silver Mask because I use their purple shampoo anyway and conditioner. In fact, I actually use a shampoo and conditioner and I usually use the purple shampoo as like my second shampoo. Um, but this is just for that extra intense, maybe like in between salon visits. If I feel like it just needs a bit of a refresh, a bit of a tone, then I thought I would pick that up at 2 dollars They also had these from the brand Mophie. And it is a wireless charging pad. It had also a USB port um, and like USB-C charger. So I thought this would be a good universal one to have. It was only $9.99. Another one with a high retail price and a branded item that was reduced is from Bondi Sands. I've never tried this before. So I'm intrigued to say the least. It's called the Pure self-tan foaming water in dark it's with hyaluronic acid and vitamin c feels quite liquidy it says it's clear clean simple and transparent colorless fragrance free formula it's quick drying gentle enough for sensitive skin as well you simply put the foaming water directly onto the skin with an application mitt wait until dry before dressing requires no wash off leave it on for at least six hours and for the deepest tan reapply 30 minutes after the initial application so you can kind of like double apply it, wash hands thoroughly after you. So I'm intrigued. It was 4 dollars but it retails for £15.49 usually. Then at £1.49, they've got these designer fragrances body sprays, which have like been known as dupes for brands. So I picked up three just to show you and to try out the different scents. But this one, Savore, you've got the One Billion, which is obviously Paco Rabanne, um, duping. And then the Neroli, which is a dupe for the Tom Ford, I think it's called Blue Neroli or something like that. And it's in that same color as well. So let me spritz this one just to give it a try. Oh, wow, that's like very summery. Let's try the One Million. That is very similar. 
how do they do it? £1.49 each. Oh, Savoir's my favourite. It's very manly though. I think maybe a bit too manly for me, but that one, just like it. And this one, perfect for summer. They have got all their Easter stuff out already, which I did resist. There was a bunny cake stand at 9 dollars that I was very tempted for, but I resisted on this occasion. However, I did pick up these two. I love the mini eggs chocolate bar that they do. And I also have never seen that they now do white cream eggs. So I picked up one of those to try. Got Barney some treats as well, which I've already opened for him. I got some bin liners, not very interesting. And also a lighter to have up here. So again, from that designer fragrances brand, they do the foam blast carpets and upholstery freshness. I have the spiced orange one and I do really like it. And they still have that one, but I thought I would try this one, Wild Fig and Cassis, because it's kind of like, duping like a Jo Malone kind of scent. So I thought I would try that one out. I also have seen that the Febreze bathroom air fresheners now do this scent as well, which sounds so nice. Orange and Neroli. Yeah, so I picked up one of those to try. I also have seen that Zaflora now do the floor wipes, which I've been using. And um, so I picked up a, another pack of those in the Mountain Air scent. They also now have a new range with Tom Kitchen of all kind of like crockery, um, wooden chopping boards, kitchen essentials. So I picked up the some of the enamel roasting dishes and roasting tins. I am gonna pop them to one side for when our kitchen is finished. But I picked up two of the smaller sized ones. I, I thought these would make for good kind of individual portions of maybe like apple crumbles, lasagna, so you could go dessert, sweet or savory and or like little mini shepherd's pies or something they were 2.99 each and then this roasting dish the round over one is 4.99 and then the larger one is 6.99 pretty good prices do they say if they're dishwasher safe yes oh yeah it also says ideal for side dishes or children's portions of things like macaroni cheese i just got some mints these are like the mint ones so i love having them in my car as well i saw these and a bit of a wild card and a bit ahead of the game bit summery but these are double dutch mixers and i just thought they sounded lovely so whenever we tend to have a mocktail cocktail some kind of like margarita inspired drink and i thought this would uh, i thought it sounded good it's a margarita soda with chili and cucumber zero alcohol so you can just do a mocktail with these or add tequila with it i think they're only about one pound two pounds and then i saw these never seen these before but they are scented sachets <clears throat> you know sometimes i get these from primark they're the sort of thing that don't tend to last that long but if you put them in a smaller space like a wardrobe or a gym bag then they do have that hit when you open them so Hopefully these will be as good as those ones too. And they are a three pack. In fact, I can really smell them. Three pack in eucalyptus and mint. And yeah, they're 99p for those. Last of the beauty items, I got these restoring magnesium flakes. If you remember from the last time I got some bath salts, I bought the Himalayan ones. Whereas I've been reading that magnesium is really good for like relaxation. If you're a bit of an anxious type of a person, to get that magnesium absorbed into your body through bath salts is really good. So yeah, I bought the wrong ones last time. These ones are transdermal magnesium foot and body soap. You just pop them in your bath. These West Lab ones, again, are cheaper than the retail price. I think this was £3.29, that one. And then last but not least, I decided to pick up these fleece insoles. They were 99p. Again, they had a retail price of much higher on these ones. And they're from the Premium Shoe Treats Shoe Care brand and I thought these would be good you just cut them to size but I thought they'd be good um for when we go to Finland if it's particularly cold to just pop those within our shoes and keep our feet nice and toasty and warm so yeah that is everything that I got I will like I said show you those pound and bits in my next video so stay tuned for that I hope you have enjoyed today's video. I hope you're all feeling well sending my love to each and every one of you. Thank you so so much for watching. Have a lovely rest of your day and I hope to see you all very very soon in my next video. Bye guys!